Hello friends, Namaste and welcome to Ramesh Knowledge Index. I am Karthik Jha here, back with the third part on structure of atom. Today we are going to discuss about the discovery of protons. In my first video on the structure of atom, I discussed about Dalton's atomic theory. Then from the second part, I started my discussion about the discovery of subatomic particles, in which firstly I discussed about discovery of electrons. Now electrons are negatively charged you know so now I'm going to talk about the discovery of positively charged subatomic particles that are the protons okay so let us get started and before watching this video I would recommend you all to see the first two parts if you have not seen go and check out uh, the link of the first two part of structure of atom in the description of this video okay so let us get started my dear friends now when we were talking about discovery of electrons we first talked about discovery of cathode rays in the same way today also we before talking about the discovery of protons we are going to talk about discovery of anode rays and these anode rays were discovered by Goldstein he was the same person who discovered proton also okay using these anode rays only okay he discovered protons as well as anode rays okay he also performed the discharge tube experiment for discovering anode rays as well as protons but he performed this experiment in a bit different manner now how was it different see he took the same perfor he took perforated tu tube like what William Krug did and he also attached it to high voltage battery in the same way as uh, William Crook and uh, JJ Thompson did but this time what he did is instead of taking perforated anode he took perforated cathode you can see here this is the perforated cathode so that if something is moving from anode towards the cathode then it could move from these holes and strike the fluorescent screen which is a which was applied behind this cathode okay so the and once it hits the fluorescent screen it will start glowing okay and also this time what he did is instead of taking the pressure as 0 0.01 millimeter of hg 0 0.01 millimeter of hg he took the pressure as 0 0.1 millimeter okay so the pressure was more comparing to last time this time he took 0 0.1 millimeter okay so the number of gas molecules was more in the previous case it was near to vacuum okay so the number of gas molecules were almost nil but in this case the number of gas molecules were more comparing to last time okay so what happened is uh, what happened is that these gas molecules or these gas atoms atoms of gas they started losing electrons they started losing electrons why because these electrons were getting attracted towards the anode okay and these electrons which were negatively charged they started moving towards anode and we know that this movement is of cathode rays so during this particular experiment even cathode rays were produced but then how anode rays were produced I will tell you now this is the structure of an atom isn't it this is the nucleus where we can find the proton and the neutron okay whereas in on the orbits or on the shells we can find electrons now these electrons came out now these electrons came out so what is left only the nucleus only the nucleus is left out and in the nucleus you have protons and neutrons neutron has no charge proton has positive charge so the overall charge was positive and positive is always attracted by negatively charged electrode so they started moving towards the cathode cathode are negatively charged electrodes no and this is positively charged so they started moving towards the uh, cathode okay and they hit the fluorescent screen and produced fluorescence 
Okay, so now uh, Goldstein observed this, and he let down some of the properties of anode rays, and these properties, some of the properties are similar to that of cathode rays. Okay, like cathode rays used to move in straight line when there was no electrical or magnetic field introduced. They used to move in straight line. In the same way, anode rays also moved in straight line when there was no, uh, when there was no field when when there was no electrical or magnetic field introduced near it okay cathode rays produced fluorescence even anode rays produced fluorescence cathode rays possessed kinetic energy even anode rays possess kinetic energy i think i did not explain you about uh, kinetic energy in the previous video i did not tell you that uh, cathode rays uh, the cathode rays possess kinetic energy now what is kinetic energy is that kinetic energy is a form of energy which is present in all moving objects a moving car a moving body a moving uh, a moving uh, any moving object you can take it as anything okay a moving bike anything so cathodes were moving so they possessed kinetic energy and even anodes were moving so they also possessed kinetic energy now there were some differences between cathode rays and anode rays also like in case of cathode rays or uh, the properties were not dependent on the nature of gas you take any gas the uh, property will be same but in case of anode rays the property was dependent on the nature of gas okay and in cathode rays uh, cathode rays were made up of electrons negatively charged particles but anode rays were made up of gaseous ions not protons gaseous ions there is a difference between gaseous ions and protons although the net charge on anode rays was positive it was not completely made up of protons i told you know the nucleus consisted of proton as well as neutron so there were neutrons also not only protons neutrons were also present okay so the ma uh, so this were this was called as gaseous ions not proton so whenever you are writing difference between anode rays and cathode rays first you will write uh, that uh, they their property is independent of the kind of nature of gas okay in case of cathode rays whereas in anode rays it is dependent on the nature of gas and never write that anode rays are made up of protons they are made up of gaseous ions what are gaseous ions when gases lose all their electrons or some of their electrons then it is called gaseous ion hydrogen 1 hydrogen plus h plus that is a gaseous ion helium plus or helium 2 plus that is also a gaseous ion when you talk about oxygen oxygen 2 minus okay then also we are talking about gaseous ions in this either we are losing or gaining electrons so gaining or losing of electrons by gases forms a gaseous ion okay now in case of cathode rays they move from cathode towards the anode in case of anode rays they move from anode towards the cathode now cathode rays showed deflection in the way a negatively charged particle does it deflected towards the positive uh, towards the positive terminal of the electrical field and south pole of magnetic field whereas in case of anode rays they deflected towards the negative uh, terminal of negative terminal of the electrical field and north pole of the magnetic field so this proved that the net charge on them was positive okay now their e by m ratio was not constant e by m ratio was different for different kind of gas that were taken if you take hydrogen the e by m ratio of anode rays will be different uh, from that of the anode rays produced by helium okay now why did that happen that happened because although the charge was of protons but the mass 
consisted of both protons and neutrons okay so the uh, we when they were calculating the charge they got the net charge of the proton only if two protons na two times the pr charge of proton but while calculating the mass they got the mass of two protons as well as the number of neutrons that were present okay so the number of neutrons were different in each atom in each gas okay so the e by m ratio the charge is to mass ratio i think you know this no I, in my previous video i told you e by m is charge by mass ratio so the charge by mass ratio was not constant let us understand this more clearly okay like let us assume this is an atom okay in what happened in and this is the anode okay you can see this is the anode this is the on the opposite side we have the cathode okay now these electrons came out of the shell came out of their orbit and started moving towards the anode okay they started moving towards the anode so now what was left out only this nucleus was left out the net charge on the nucleus was positive so it started moving towards the cathode but the charge was of positive but the mass was a combined mass of proton as well as neutron okay so that is the reason why the charge by mass ratio for different uh, gases was coming different okay because the number of neutrons in each gas is different in case of hydrogen you don't have any neutron in case of helium you have two neutrons in case of helium you have two neutrons in case of hydrogen you have zero and in case of oxygen you have eight neutrons okay so the there was a combined mass of protons as well as neutrons okay what happened in case of hydrogen was a bit shocking for them for us today we know today you if i explain you you will understand but for them it was very surprising why because hydrogen showed the maximum charge is to mass ratio maximum why did that happen because hydrogen consists of one electron and one proton it does not consist of any neutron okay so the electron came out and started moving towards the anode now only the proton was left out so it started moving towards the cathode now if i write h plus what does that mean that means one proton why because electron is gone electron has left when electron leaves what is left out only one proton is left out so you, they got the charge of one proton divided by charge divided by the mass of one proton so e of one proton divided by mass of e, one proton so this gave them the accurate charge by mass ratio of a proton okay now what so now i think uh, you are clear with the difference between anode rays as well as proton see anode rays are not completely made up of protons they are made up of protons as well as neutrons only in case of hydrogen there is no neutron and that is the reason why the charge is to mass ratio is the highest okay so using this they understood that the positively charged particle of an atom is proton okay and the charge is to mass ratio of a proton is 9.58 into 10 to the power 7 coulomb per kg how did they find that using the hydrogen atom okay using the gaseous ion of a hydrogen atom they found the charge of the proton to be plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb so the magnitude of charge of proton is equal to the magnitude of charge of electron okay but they are they, uh, but they are different how they are different this is positively charged and that was negatively charged that was negatively charged okay so although the magnitude is different uh, magnitude is same their sign convection is different so at that time they did not use different signs after the discovery of proton they started using different sign 
for positive charge as well as negative charge okay now they knew the charge by mass ratio they knew the charge of the proton so they calculated the mass of the proton as well they found the mass to be 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 and it was not that negligible it could be considered okay so this was nearly equal to 1 amu 1 amu okay this amu is the unit using which we calculate the mass of an atom okay and i will explain about this later in some other video okay but remember that mass of proton was not negligible as in the case of electron okay unlike electrons okay so their mass was considered even the mass of neutrons was considered why how and uh, the, when they discovered a neutron i will discuss about this in the next video so that's it for today thank you friends if you found this video to be useful please like share and subscribe if you have any doubt regarding the topic that i have covered you can ask me in the comment box you can go and check out the link of my facebook page in the description okay thank you for your support thank you